It's about appearances, what we look nowadays, uh, and, my, uh, and this is going to be part of my uh, lecture, which is going to be the clinical decision making, uh, although Fahad uh, took my thunder. So, uh, uh, so uh, what we make decisions on a daily basis, and uh, how we proceed, what are the factors, we're trying to make the approach, the framework, and see how, how do we avoid the pitfalls. And it's in general. The medical professional is uh, going through um, restructuring. It's not only with the, the vision locally, but it's international. So we make decisions continuously. You have choices, and you go through them. The difference in emergency department is that we do that in a short time. We don't have the luxury that other situations or other specialties they face. And actually, that's what makes us, in general, good physicians and later on good managers. As you can see, the, we are flourishing now with having uh, unique emergency physicians holding many positions across the nation and the hospitals kingdom-wide. Uh, we can name a lot if we want to go that road. So why we do why we're doing a good in their situation? Because we are trained to make decisions, proper decisions, and we can live with the uncertainty, uncertainty that we, uh, we have in the medicine department. We don't have time, we cannot validate the facts we have, and we can live in an open environment. Other specialties, they always in controlled environment, in the clinic, in the OR, and all this will make them weak and vulnerable to making decisions. The errors. To err is human, and that is a, a really wide and a widely acceptable, and actually it uh, builds the whole roadmap for, emergency, uh, for the healthcare quality. Uh, to err is human. It was in the 90s, uh, a large international study, and it discovered that so many cases we face in the, in the healthcare, we have human error, and it goes unnoticed, and we need to make sure that it doesn't happen. So this is the Swiss cheese uh, model. So usually through the system, we will have a, a layers and hopefully that someone will prevent a layer from happening, uh, a mistake from happening. But at some points, it will straighten up and fatal mistakes happen to the patient. And it's always easier to go with respective and judge people. Another study actually it compared emergency physicians with surgeons, and the bad cam is not something we, lo we like. So what we have that uh, we have a little area for adverse events uh, outcomes, but we have so many problems with the diagnosis in contrast to the surgeons. Uh, this is a famous book called Thinking Fast and Slow, and actually it's a Nobel Prize uh, book uh, under an author. So the main idea is that we shift in our life between making decisions fast and slow. We have the fast mode and we have the slow mode. The fast mode will be something that uh, we make quickly on daily basis for the things that it doesn't matter or we have done it before or we're trained off, trained for it. And that's what we do in the med department. That's what you are trained for. You make quick decisions. But sometimes you take a step back, you look at the whole picture, you try to think more about it, more analytic, with more resources, more time. But that's something we don't have much of a luxury in the emergency department. So the first thing to solve a problem is to be aware about it and to uh, approve that we have it. So we have the framing as a bias, and it's mainly the stereotyping. So what happens that when you see a patient, it's a new housemaid who came, and she's, uh, some, she might be unconscious, or you'll say, yeah, I saw her trimming, she's uh, just faking or so, yeah, Java syndrome, don't deal with it, and you try to leave it. But when you go and deal with the patient, you examine her well, and then you say, no, I'm gonna CT brain her, and then you find that she really has intracranial bleed, and that's a framing issue. And, uh, and we, have, we can face so much e examples. We have also the availability heuristic, 
because I saw this case last week, so every case I could think it's the same, although it's rare. And then we have the representative heuristic, and that's the situation where you, because it fits the textbook presentation of a rare disease, we will put that rare disease on the top of our list instead of thinking, no, it's a, co it's a common disease coming with an uncommon presentation because the rule is uncommon presentation of common disease is more common than common presentation of uncommon disease. I'm sorry if you lost me, especially this time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like here, in the TB, EG, Mariud, the presentation, very untypical. I'm not going to think about sarcoidosis and other So then we move on to the next part, which is anchoring. Anchoring is when you are fixed to a piece of information, and regardless of other information and facts you, you, you come across, you will just deny it, and you want to stick with the first part you receive. The overconfidence, and that's a part we face a lot. The confirmation, and the confirmation is, again, you want to say, no, this is X, and regardless of any information, you don't move forward. The self-satisfying part is where, mostly with orthopedic uh, cases, that what is the most common uh, fracture we miss? The second fracture. Why? Because you found something, you stopped looking for it. It happens with all over diagnosis. You face a problem, you find the diagnosis, and you say, okay, he's only allowed for one disease. He's not allowed to get another disease, and you don't look for other uh, pathologies running underneath. So what do we do? So we get aware of that we are being vulnerable to uh, be biased and to commit errors. We need to detect it and to learn the bias techniques we will go through in a second and implement the skills and maintain it over time. And this happens with, with training. It's a self-discipline approach. So uh, for the debiasing techniques, we have the complete history. Wow. So we have the, the complete history, the structural checklist to the standardization as uh, Fahad mentioned, to control our effect, to control the exposure, the timeout, especially in our situations in the emergency department when it gets he hectic, you need to take a timeout, take a debriefing for yourself and try to think about the cases you're facing. You need to slow down and it's never, it is never a shame to have a second opinion. There is something called the 10th man approach or the red team where you will ask someone else who wasn't involved in the case and you'll tell him, please, critique the situation. Find me the holes. Find me the Swiss, uh, the Swiss cheese uh, uh, holes in, the, in this case, in this scenario. And he will give you as the full critique and trying to find the problems. The mental simulation that you will say to yourself, okay, I'm going about to see this patient. The chart said he is a middle age with so-and-so with this complaint. So I'm putting for myself the plan, the process mapping, and the choices that I might face. I say, okay, if so-and-so, I will do X. If the otherwise, I will do Y. So what you're doing is from the beginning, you're creating yourself a roadmap where you're heading so the mental load will be less, lesser on you down the road. The cognitive rally point. So, and this is what I do about every two hours in the shift. When you, because you never control the wave of the patients you're facing. So every two hours I'd say, okay, team, let's group, let's round on the patients. And you deal with them as you're endorsing yourself. So you are checking the, point, uh, the patients again and seeing, are you following up what's happening? Uh, what did you miss? And so on, and then you can discuss it and get the outcome for the patient and avoid any pitfalls. We have the rules of phase, and it's about, it's about to have at least three diagnoses for the patient. So you should not say, okay, I'm just gonna do the troponin. If it's negative, I'm gonna discharge the patient, two sets. You, should, you need a differential diagnosis for the patient. You need to say, okay, what if, what else might happen? What's going underneath? Is there another uh, diagnosis, uh, two diagnoses at least? The last point is that you are trained to think using your brain, not your guts. Thanks a lot.
Thank <laughs> you.